Any unintended consequences coming out of this that you're aware of? All of the evidence that we have collected to date indicates that when you seed a thunderstorm in order to increase the amount of rainwater that it's producing, you lessen the likelihood that it's going to produce damaging hail and damaging winds. Early on when we began using this technology, the, the, the purpose of introducing artificial ice crystals is to convert more vapor into liquid water in the cloud. And when you go from vapor to liquid, you release heat. The thought was, if you release a lot of additional heat, you're going to grow a modest thunderstorm into a supercell, which becomes 50 or 60,000 feet tall, and they invariably produce something other than rain, which no one wants. Tornadoes. But we have found that the additional latent heat released when you convert cloud water into liquid rainwater is not used to fuel the storm so that it grows that much taller. It actually grows more laterally. And so you end up getting a more widespread rain event. The rain lasts longer because there is more produced and delivered, and it benefits a larger area than it would have naturally. And here in your office, what are you doing? What are you working on in relation to this cloud seeding project? TDLR licenses and permits these groundwater districts to do these projects. We ensure that the people that are operating the projects are well qualified. Uh, the, the pilots are trained, the meteorologists who make the day-to-day -day decisions on whether to seed or not to seed are licensed by us. Uh, we monitor their operation, we assist in the analysis, in the collection of data and the analysis of that data to determine that good is being done. The weather modification statute requires the state agency to ensure that any proposed weather modification activity is not going to dissipate clouds or prevent their natural course in developing rain to the detriment of people or property living in the area. In other words, the burden is on us to ensure that the job is done and that it's done well and that no one is being harmed as a result. And you mentioned that this is going on in West and South Texas. Yes. Not over Travis County? Not over Travis County. And any particular reason why not? I'm just not aware of that much interest here from decision makers. And there are not the mechanisms in place here in terms of groundwater conservation districts um, to perhaps facilitate that or make it make it happen in the short term. So those of us who are sitting on the ground sweating to death and begging for rain, we, we might want to talk to our elected leaders and, and the, the people they appoint. To, if we wanted to see cloud seeding going on in and around Central Texas, it's, it's got to be a, a bottom-up process. That's true. A at one time, there was state money available to help build these projects, uh, but that money has been used. And so now the, the burden of putting the program together would have to be borne by regional or local interests, such as county commissions or groundwater districts or aquifer authorities. So we know who to talk to. Uh, right. If there was an interest, let, let, let's talk about it from the science end of it mm -hmm. for a minute. If there was an interest, is it something that's doable here? Is, is there something peculiar about our, our weather, our climate, different from San Antonio or, or Lubbock? It's very doable here. Uh, as a matter of fact, we probably during a growing season would have more seeding opportunities than folks living out in the Edwards Plateau and certainly west of the Trans-Pecos. There is no reason not to consider cloud seeding as a viable water management strategy for Central Texas. Right. We're that much closer to the source of moisture, the Gulf of Mexico. And you'd be glad to, to help? Uh, we surely would. That's one of our roles, is to help uh, with the design and implementation of these projects. So bottom line is, if we want it to come from up down, we got to get busy working from down up. Yes, and that usually begins with giving uh, 
correct information uh, to people. Uh, some people have ideas about weather modification that are rooted in um, legend or um, technologies that, that were quite primitive, say 30 or 40 years ago. But they're scared of it. Uh, right, and, and they've heard stories of people being taken advantage of by somebody coming in and touting that he can make it rain. That happened often during the 1950s when Texas was in the throes of a, of a historic drought. A lot of people felt that there were charlatans that took advantage of them. Uh, we've come a long way since the 1950s. We not only have better seeding materials, we have better delivery, si better delivery systems. We have much better methods for tracking where these aircraft are, when they seed, when they stop seeding. Uh, we have the best radar in the world to, to monitor these conditions and to assess the behavior of storms during and after they've happened. All right. There are a lot of tools available to help anyone put a, a program together. To make it rain. To make it rain.